Hey, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I am Angela. I'm a full-time voiceover artist and audiobook narrator, and this channel is dedicated to those of you that are just getting started out. And I show you some techniques and some tips and tricks that I use every day with my voiceover business. What I want to show you today is some basic techniques in Adobe Audition for removing noise. As audiobook narrators and voice actors, we're people. We have hiccups and noise farts and breaths and AC noise, which you could probably hear right now. You have dogs barking in the background. You have just miscellaneous noises that come up while you're trying to record for your clients. So what I'm going to show you today using my Adobe Audition is how to easily find and remove these in just using the basic effects that are available in Adobe Audition. So let's get started. Okay, so here we have just a little snippet of an audiobook that I'm currently narrating. And when you're using Adobe Audition and you're recording a file, this is pretty much what it looks like, right? What I use is the spectral display. And to see the spectral display, you go up to this little button here and click it. And then you have our spectral display. So if I zoom in, you can actually see all the different frequencies that make up your voice or any noises in the background, which makes them easier to spot. Versus if you look at it this way, all you see is your narration, right? So I use a clicker to mark my mistakes. So I see one here, I see a couple here. You can easily see them in just the waveform, but if you look at them in spectral, they're very hard to miss. I have, it looks like I have a word here that I, I struggled with. So seeing my clicks, right, with my dog clicker, it makes this two, these two click marks, right? So I can easily see them. So I can just select my goof ups and delete them, right? And down here at the bottom, I have a little bit of a light rumble or something that is just the ambient noise that's in the background. It could be the computer outside that my mic is picking up. It could be, you know, a slight rumble outside from a truck passing by. But if I just use the waveform, I don't see anything. You know, I don't see that it's even there. And it might not be that audible, but if it was something a little bit louder and you're recording an audiobook, as we all know, your noise floor needs to be below minus 60 decibels. So that's going to be hard to gauge at a glance if you just use the waveform. However, if you use the spectral display, you can see that there's a light rumbling down at the bottom. But I don't think this is going to be an issue, but I'm going to play this because this is an audiobook. I want to make sure that it's not too loud. So I highlighted this section, right? Because I want to listen to just this section. I don't want to listen to the entire track, just this section. And then as this plays, I'm going to watch the noise levels down here at the bottom. And this is where it cannot go over for ACX, right? This is the highest your noise floor can be, minus 60 dB. So let's play this and see if it passes. And it's below 71 dB because that's how, how low my level bar goes. So we're okay. But if we take a look around this track, we can also see where I took a shallow breath. There's another mistake there. See, this breath would be hard to see if I was just using the waveform. But using the spectral display, I can see that there is a breath there. And that same, the same thing goes for mouth noise as well. Now, mouth noise is just a normal human thing. We all have sticky mouths. As gross as it is, we all do. It's just part of being human, right? We've got saliva in our mouths, and it makes noise sometimes when you're narrating an audiobook, which is distracting for the listener. So using my spectral display in Audition, if I, if I zoom in, 
I can see this line right here, and that's mouth noise. Now, if I was using just the waveform, I can kind of see it right here. There's my mouth noise, right? But using my spectral display, it sort of stands out amongst all of these other frequencies. There's another one here. There's a straight line down. That's mouth noise or a click of my tongue in a word. But this is standing out to me as mouth noise. So with my healing brush, I can just spot heal it. But in the case that this low noise down here at the bottom, if it was too loud to pass for ACX's standards, what I would do is I would come up here and select my marquee selection tool or press E on my keyboard to turn my cursor from the healing brush circle to this little cross, right? And this cross, once you click with your mouse and drag it, will create geometric shapes or a square where you can select what noise you want to focus on. So once I have this low rumble down here selected, I'm going to go up to Effects, click Noise Reduction Restoration, and Noise Reduction Process. And then, making sure that the noise I want to remove or reduce is still highlighted, you click Capture Noise Print. And that will show you your noise on this display. And once our noise is captured, we're going to select the entire file, and we can reduce this by decibels and or by percentage. So I want to reduce this noise by, let's say, another 10 decibels. I'm just going to reduce it by like maybe, let's just do 70%. There we go. And then I'm going to apply. And as we can see, not all, but some of that noise, that low noise has been removed or reduced. So that little trick will really help if you have an underlying like row num uh row numble low rumble that is just barely audible. If you want to make sure that your audiobook passes ACX, it has to be below negative 60 dB. So that little trick will save you a lot of time in trying to reduce that low rumble that is in your audio file. But for this breath here, I'm just going to highlight it and delete it. Any mistakes in narration that I made, I'm going to listen to... You put my ears on so I can hear it. So to remove a mistake in Adobe Audition, and again, I use a dog clicker to mark my mistakes, I'm going to put my playhead right after I made the click, because that should be where I picked back up with the correct narration, and just listen to what is being said. I explained I wanted. Okay. And then I'm going to go to right before the click, which should be the mistake, just to make sure that it's the right part that I'm deleting. I explained I want. So that is the same narration. However, I made a mistake, right? So I'm going to select the mistake and the click. And I'm going to take this probably, yeah, right just before I picked up the correct narration and delete. And then I see a breath over here. So I'm just going to select that breath and delete it. And normally, I don't remove every single breath. A nice natural breath in between sentences is completely normal and acceptable. Larger breaths, when I'm taking a big gulp of air or if I cough or something like that, then I will remove that. So here is something that's a little bit audible here. So I am going to select it. And then I'm also like clearing my throat here. I think this is why I made, it's not really a mistake. It's more like a, I needed a breath and to clear my throat. And that's what this is. So I'm going to select this breath and the throat clearing and the click to indicate to remove it. And I'm just going to delete that. Okay. I... Here's another mistake. This is where the narration is correct. And this is where I goofed. So I'm going to select the click and the goof and just delete them. And then I'm going to go through the entire file and just at a glance using the spectral display, it's a lot easier to see where your breaths are if you have uh, 
an underlying low rumble noise that you need to reduce or if just to remove your retakes. Using the spectral display in Adobe Audition will definitely speed up your editing time. There you go, guys. There's a short little video on removing some common noises in Adobe Audition using the spectral display. A lot of people I've talked to recently didn't know that the spectral display existed in Adobe Audition, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to share this information and how you can use it to your advantage when you're editing your uh, audio files in Adobe Audition. So once again, I hope this helped. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like and subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And if you want to know more about me, my work, or how I can help you get started in voiceover, then check out my website, voiceoverangela.com. Thank you so much for your time, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.